You're listening to the Call Kent podcast, where Kent C. Dodds answers questions and gives insights to software engineers like you. Now, let's hear the call. Hey, Kent, it's Jan. I was wondering, how do you create a progress bar for actions in Remix? Meaning, imagine the following scenario. For some reason, there's a service that you're using that just takes 10, 20 seconds to respond and you, there's nothing you can do about it, right? And you can talk through it either through the client or through the action, whatever. But the end goal is that on the browser, there's a loading bar that slowly fills and then when the request comes back and the reply comes through the loading bar rapidly fills if it hasn't filled yet right so how would you do something like that in remix thank you very much for answering if you do <laughs> bye and that was the call here's what kent had to say hey there yeah thanks for the question uh so This one's kind of interesting. First of all, I'm going to make sure that I understand your question. I'm going to tell you that I'm assuming you're not talking about the uh, request itself taking a long time, uh, as in like the user is uploading a file that is a, a large file, and so you want to give them upload progress. If that's what you're talking about, then unfortunately, we can't use the Fetch API for that because it doesn't have uh, that information. You can't get that information. Um, as of yet, maybe one day, I don't know. Um, I don't think anybody is actively working on that. If you want that, then you use need, you need to use XHRs, uh, which will give you that progress, which is kind of a bummer, but uh, there aren't a lot of use cases. Uh, well, s s for real, there are use cases for that for um, uploading large files, but if you're not, uh, we're not typically doing that all over the place. So that's probably why the Fetch API doesn't have support for this because we have a relatively not terrible workaround for it, um, although it is kind of annoying. Um, anyway, I'm, not, I'm assuming you're not talking about that. And what you're talking about instead is you make a request and um, that the server is working on that for a while uh, before that response shows up. So um, I have a, a situation like this. Uh, as soon as I finish recording this response to you, I'm going to hit save and, uh, and publish. And that request is going to go to uh, my backend server and it's going to say, okay, take Yan's question and Kent's uh, answer, and then uh, stick the, the bumpers, like the, the music at the beginning and the end, uh, as well as the um, interstitial thing between them, and stitch it all together uses, using FFmpeg, and turn that into a file, and then we'll upload it to uh, the podcasting service and the, to create a podcast. That whole process takes uh, about 20 seconds, uh, some, uh, depending on the length of the episode. And so what I do is, uh, really nothing uh, special. <laughs> so um, uh, I, because I'm the only consumer of this, I actually don't really mind that it takes a while. That said, uh, I'm not doing anything special, meaning I'm not doing anything more than what I'm doing for uh, regular requests that can take a little bit mo uh, more time on my website. And what I'm doing uh, for regular requests and what everybody should do is uh, think about those pending states for users, even if it's not taking 10 to 20 seconds. You, you cannot control the user's network. And so uh, your users are going to need to see pending states at some point. Uh, and so what I suggest is you use the use navigation hook from Remix. Uh, it, this gives you a navigation object which has a state property. And if you want to see how I do it on my site, uh, just like throttle your network so that you, you're going slow. Um, and then navigate around and you'll see a little pop-up in the bottom right corner saying that uh, we're loading, that we're navigating, uh, just to give the user some feedback. Um, if the request is fast, then I don't show that. Um, and so I, I use a library called spin delay uh, to avoid showing a loading spinner if it, it takes less than like 400 milliseconds um, to load the next page. So uh, that's all that I do for my long running thing is I just let that thing uh, show up and the user's just sitting there waiting. Um, that works out pretty well for me, um, but, and, and that will apply for like users with a slow network connection, they'll see that so they get that feedback and it applies for my long running tasks. Um, so that could probably work well for you as well. You could check out uh, the repo, kentcdods.com uh, on, on GitHub 
um, and look at the root uh, route. And that has a page loading message uh, component that you can look at. I'll, I'll link to that in the description. Uh, the Epic stack also has something uh, for showing progress. Um, and that is a like a progress loading uh, bar at the top. Um, there is even the a progress component uh, file, and I'll link to that as well. Uh, that does something kind of similar. But the, the point is that um, if the request is taking too long, that whatever navigation is happening, um, then it will display some sort of progress so the user knows that something's going on. Now, uh, I'm not actually done yet. Uh, so if you have um, things that are typically taking a long time for you, um, or like you're you're doing some sort of processing or something, you might consider adding some background jobs uh, for that. The reason is that um, if uh, if that were to fail, uh, maybe the user says, "Okay, yeah, go ahead," and then they're like, "Well, this always takes a long time. I'm just going to close the tab and I'm going to go away, or whatever." Uh, and let's say that it fails. Well, now uh, it failed and. Uh, you'll have to add some sort of logic to say if it failed and the user closed their tab, then send them an email. Uh, and so for things that are like extra long running tasks or something like that, you might consider um, having some sort of back background process. So the request just queues it up, says add this to your task um, you know, process list. And then the response comes right back and tells the user, we've added it to our list of things to do. And then maybe you could even display somewhere where it shows the, uh, their background jobs so they can look at the status of uh, their jobs if they wanted to or something. Um, but that way, if there's an error, you can send them a, a message or you can add it as a record in the database so that they know that it failed. Um, and uh, yeah, and then they're not sitting there waiting for you know that time while they're waiting for that request to come back. Uh, the other thing is like their their connection could get reset in the middle of that request or something, and so it is just less clear to the um, to you. Like you have less uh, capability of showing the user a successful state um, in that scenario as well. So anyway, that's just something to think about um, is maybe exploring a background job for uh, things that take a long time. Now for myself and this podcast thing that I'm using right now, am I exploring a background job for that? No, because I'm the only user of this. Um, for people who record their questions, uh, it literally just you upload your um, audio um, recording, and that doesn't take a super long time. I do have the pending spinner and stuff, um, but it, it, there's no processing on the back end for it. Um, not really. There's a little bit of stuff that goes on, but nothing that takes a long time. And so, um, yeah, I'm the only one who uses this that uh, actually does some processing on the back end. And I have just accepted that I have to wait um, 20 seconds or so um, before I actually uh, get to see whether it worked. So hopefully that answers your question, Yan. Um, I've got uh, links that I'll put in the description of two places where I use use navigation to display um, some global pending state for users. It's it, honestly the uh, component, the progress bar component in the Epic stack is uh, not using any like UI dependencies. Um, it's just, uh, it's using spin delay and stuff, but um, it's only, 63 lines of code, the whole thing. So um, yeah, it's not really all that much. Hopefully that's helpful. Take care. This has been the Call Kent podcast. Learn more about Kent at kentcdods.com and get your own questions answered at kentcdods.com slash calls.